Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and here I am. It's Friday night. I'm just trying to chill, watch my boy, I Man Rich the Swag Lord, stream some Resident Evil 4 while, you know, going through some articles, figuring out, you know, hey, what's in the news? And I see the most ridiculous thing I've seen in quite some time. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Are you excited for it? Well, I don't know why you are. It's Marvel, it's the MCU, it's Phase 5. But I get it. A lot of folks say, hey, this is the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's got to be one of the only good things left in Marvel. And to that, I say, you know what? Fair enough. But, uh, did you know it's sexist? Or at least the marketing of it is sexist, according to our favorite outlet, The Mary Sue. Let's take a look at this bogus article and go over Twitter, where you know sanity lies in full. The subtle sexism in the new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 poster is disappointing. Ah, uh, yes. So, there's no sexism here. These are not the posters they're referring to. However, I would like to make the case that even this poster is sexist. Why is it sexist? Because it shows a strong man, Peter Quill, in the center, looking dead on, while the two women, well, they're off to the side looking down in a subservient manner. Now, did that sound a bit ridiculous? A little dumb? Did I poison some of your brain cells? Well, that's effectively the argument that's being made for the rest of these photos that and posters I'm about to show you. Listen, I can already hear you groaning after reading the title and saying, What are you talking about? Why are you looking so deeply at some movie posters? And that's a fair question. Why are you looking deeply at movie posters for a comedy comic book film? You ain't gonna get some highbrow art in there. This ain't the Mona Lisa or The Last Supper. But whatever, I get it. It's, it's the weekend, it's a slow day, you need something to write about and something to send some rage clicks at. And to all that grumbling, I say, shh, let me walk you through this seemingly harmless group of movie posters. Did you just shush me? Did you just woman-splain to me why I shouldn't be talking right now? I guess... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 takes place after the absolute madness shit show that was Avengers Endgame and Thor Love and Thunder. First of all, it takes place after much more than that, but are you calling uh, the Avengers Endgame uh, a shit show in a negative way? Or if you're saying it in a positive way, that would imply Thor Love and Thunder is getting it in a positive way as well. That movie was garbage. That movie was hot dog water. Like, there is no way you can compare the two. You picked some absolute strange things to combine here. You could have said madness and shit show about Thor Love and Thunder and Ant-Man Quantumania because those were both absolute garbage again but it, it, don't me, I don't even like Endgame that much but I'm in the minority at least I thought I was so this is already off to a very strange start the team is still together and barely saving communities from danger. Gamora 2.0 still doesn't fully remember everyone and is off doing her own thing for a bit. It's a little messy to start with, but the plot seems to be centered about Rocket Raccoon and his mysterious past that's come back to haunt him. In a newly released batch of movie posters, we can see Peter Quill, Rocket, Groot, and Drax standing tall while holding super cool weapons with different galaxies printed on them. As for Gamora, Mantis, and Nebula, well, they're there, sitting awkwardly. So... This is not exactly a super cool looking poster, in my opinion. Like, I love the vaporwave color, but we got Chris Pratt here with effectively a power glove from Nintendo. I'm sorry, that's not super cool. It's not like he's gearing up for battle or anything. He, he looks like he's using some old 80s tech to listen to old 80s music. So, alright, well, let's see what the next one looks like. Okay, Rocket looks characteristically like Rocket. I mean, that that's in character, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Drax looks like he's doing, I don't know, like, like a cover shoot for a Beastie Boys album. You stated they were standing tall looking co super cool with weapons in different galaxies. I don't, I don't see a weapon here. I see a Beastie Boys al album. Okay, Nebula. Nebula looks pretty cool. I like Nebula. That looks fine by me. Mantis looks, actually, the Mantis might have the coolest poster so far. And ba we're back to Beastie Boys. This is absolutely a Beastie Boys lookalike right here. Uh, Cosmo, you know, whatever, people love dogs. Uh, Craglin, I, I, again, I don't really see a weapon. I see an honestly very awkward pose that, I don't like this, this is at the least aesthetically pleasing. Gamora looks dope as well. Gamora looks cool. And, and that's all of them. So, it says that they're, they're sitting awkwardly. Well, let's keep going, my friends. I'm not one to cry foul every time I feel like something is a bit off when it comes to movie and TV marketing. Yeah, you are. You work for the Mary Sue. You're absolutely one to cry foul about anything like that. Your entire brand is built on that. Don't sit there and lie to us. We know what you are at this point. You, you can't hide it. You've been doing this for the better part of like, I don't know, six years, give or take. So at least own up to what you are instead of trying to pretend that's what you aren't. Uh, I'm well aware that a lot of thought and hard work goes into these posters and trailers, and everything is double-checked by teams of people. So when I see these posters, I couldn't help but think, 
Who approved this? The only three women in the franchise are sitting on the ground. Why? For what reason? All the guys, plus the tree and raccoon, are standing and looking badass with their weapons. So why did the Guardians marketing team decide to leave their women characters literally on the ground? Now, I got something fun to say about this. I got, I got a little anecdote that did happen before I recorded this, but I'll let this get a bit further before I regale that with you, because I think you guys will enjoy that. So here I am. I'm enticing you. I'm wetting that whistle. Stick around. You're going to hear something funny here in a moment. So Pop Detective posted, It's super weird that all the men in these posters are standing up and ready for action while women are sitting on the ground reclining. Again, the only one ready for action was Rocket. Th that was it. The only male ready for action is Rocket. Peter Quill is just listening to music, and Groot is posing for a rap album from the 90s. That's not ready for action. Whatever ad agency is responsible for this poster series probably didn't even notice the subtle sexism, but it's pretty undeniable when the only three women are posed in passive positions. Ah, uh, it's not uncommon for women to be seen as subservient to men when it comes to their role in advertising. In a study published in the Journal of International Women's Studies, no bias there, guys, absolutely no bias there. The Journal of International Women's Studies, completely peer-reviewed by only the most unbiased, impartial reviewers you could find. Authors Sanjita Sharma and Arpan Bum, oh, it's a really unfortunate name. I both of you guys got pretty unfortunate names highlighted the fact that women are often portrayed as lying down on the ground or on a bed, making women passive, and in some cases is a clear indication of social hierarchy. <sighs> Guys, there are three things in the world that I know for fact are made up, are bogus, are not real. Bigfoot, Resident Evil 3 remake fans, and individuals that truly believe that uh, the fact that women are often portrayed as lying down on the ground or on the bed, making women passive, and in some cases is a clear indication of social hierarchy. None of those things that I've just listed existed. I will reiterate. Bigfoot, Resident Evil 3 remake fans, and whatever this anomaly in our current timeline is, they're not real. They can't hurt you. And that can make women seem less intelligent and having a need for man's protection. The Guardians posters are just another spoke in a sexist wheel that women have been dealing with for centuries, and it's incredibly disappointing to see from a franchise with such strong, capable women. I can only hope James Gunn didn't allow the sexist views in the marketing campaign to leak into this film. Now here's the dealio. When I look at this, I don't see anything passive. In fact, I see Gamora sitting there so calm and confident She's just chilling. She doesn't have to be on her guard because she knows she's a badass. She can just sit there, relax. She's smirking. This is clearly a confidence power move. Literally the same can be said for Gamora. Look at the stare she is giving you. She's sitting there like, yeah, yeah, bring it. I can take it. I don't even have to, to be on my guard. I can sit here in this totally nonchalant, relaxed, cool girl position, and I can take you just fine. Mantis, I mean, Mantis doesn't look subservient in any way, shape, or form. She just looks like she's trying to look cool, which, to be fair, she does. Again, I actually think the Mantis poster, literally of any of them, is probably the coolest looking. And it's probably just because Mantis' design goes very well with this entire aesthetic. But basically, yeah, this is all factually incorrect. Like, like, there is no basis for what they're referring to. Again, unless you want to go off the totally unbiased Journal of International Women's Studies. However, let's get to that amusing little anecdote that I was telling you guys about. So like I said, I'm sitting here, I'm watching my boy, you know, do some streaming, do, do some gaming, and I audibly groan at this article. Now, my grandmother, who was in the room at the time, asked what? What was going on? And I explained to her, and I, I told her what I had just seen in this article, and I asked her her opinion. Now, this 70-year-old woman's opinion, who is probably the pinnacle of feminism, considering she lived through the 60s, which was when real feminism actually happened, uh, so this pinnacle of feminism said, yes, it is sexist. Uh, I was a bit taken aback for a moment, but then she goes on to say, it's sexist against men. The women get to sit down. Why don't the men get to sit? Why do the men have to stand there, be on guard while the women get to relax? And let me tell you, when I, when this 70-year-old feminist that, you know, actually understands women's rights and whatnot said that, I, I immediately jumped on here to record. Because this entire video, this entire 
uh, me going over this article and explaining this buffoonery was just so I could get to the story where I told you guys that a legit feminist, a 70-year-old woman, thinks that this is sexist but sexist against men because of course the women get to sit but the men don't. That is incredible. Oh, how the turns have tabled. But yeah, that's all I got for you on this one, guys. Super sweet, short, good to the point. You know, like I said, it's Saturday. No one wants to be bombarded with just the super heavy stuff on Saturday. I normally do a Nerdcore music review on Saturdays. Maybe I'll still pump one out. I'm not sure. But this was just too good not to cover. So let me know. Are you going to be seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Or are you too afraid of putting your money towards the capitalist patriarchy because you have dignity and you will not let sexism like this stand, especially in the modern MCU? That's what I would like to know. That being said, you guys know my opinion. I want to know yours. Let me know in the comments down below or let me know on Twitter where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. We've gotten over that 700 subscriber hump and I would love to make it to a thousand sometime soon. I mean, I could only do this because of you. I can't thank you enough. I can't believe we've gotten this far in such short a time. So thank you so much. Can't wait to hit that next milestone. I am a nerdy news channel. I do nerdy news every day. Not always about Disney or the MCU, but about anime, comics, movies, you name it. It's all here in the nerdosphere. And this has been Words of Paradise.